Some people are wondering about the name of our creator, the all-powerful creator of the universe, he who sent his son to the earth to save us, to give up his life for us, he gave up his son for us. Well, uh, some people use the name Yahweh, some people use the name Jehovah, and there are different, there are different names for the, what we call the Tetragrammaton, which is just a fancy Greek word for the four letters. That's what Tetragrammaton means, the four letters, which are in Hebrew, yod Hey vav Hey, which comes out to like, in English it would be like Y-H-W-H, and some people think it's Y-H-V-H. And that's why you have variations like Yahweh or Yahovah or Jehovah. Ah, instead of a Y, some people think it's a J. You know, so you have this controversy. What I recommend is you do what I did, go out and read all the articles on, um, about, you know, on both sides. Don't just read one that's always against Jehovah or always against Yahweh. I read articles um, on both sides and many sides. It, it gets to be overwhelming because there's so many theories and so many um, ideas on the different pronunciations of the Tetragrammaton, the four letters. And uh, I just have to say, I read through so many. I spent days reading through many, many articles on uh, proving why each side felt that they were proving one, with 100% accuracy that it should be pronounced this way or that way. And so, in the end, you have to draw your own conclusions and pray about it and ask, I say Yahweh, ask Yahweh to help you. Uh, I by no way am I uh, the, a, you know, the ultimate authority on the names of Yahweh or Elohim, but I speak um, two languages, two spoken languages fluently, English and Spanish, and I, um, I speak Italian pretty well, I've studied that. I know American Sign Language um, pretty well, and uh, I've studied French, German, Hebrew, and Portuguese. I certainly couldn't have a really great conversation in any of those last languages. But I've, I'm a, I've been around language for a long time and linguistics. I've, I've studied um, linguistics quite a bit. And um, of course, concerning the Bible, different linguistic aspects of Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And uh, after, after the studies, I just came to my conclusion, and I'm not saying this should be your conclusion, obviously, you have to draw your own conclusions. But I came to the conclusion that the, um, what would be the best pronunciation for me that I felt best with was Yahweh for the Tetragrammaton and Yeshua for the Son. Now in the Old Testament, at times it says Yahweh, and I think it's actually talking about who later became Yeshua, that being who's always been in heaven with the Father. He, um, you know, he wasn't born by the Virgin Mary yet, and so he wasn't given the name Yeshua yet. And so, but at that time he existed, and I think that it was he who spoke with uh, Abraham and Moses and Noah, and you know, he spoke to them face to face. Because in the New Testament it says that no one, no man has ever seen the Father. So I certainly don't think it could be the Father, uh, the Ancient of Days. I think it was Yeshua before, his, before he received that name, Yeshua, but it was that being of the two the two Elohim that are in heaven. Remember the word Elohim, which a lot of people just think means God. It doesn't. It means gods. It's the plural. The ending im in Hebrew is the plural uh, ending. It's like the s that we add to a word in English. And um, that's why you know that uh, when Yeshua was hanging on the stake, the tree, or the cross, he said, Eli, Eli. Lama Sabachthani. A lot of people know that, right? So he said Eli. Eli means El is what we would say God in English um, or deity. And E, when you add E to it, it means my. So they say like God my, God my, instead of we say in English my God, my God. And they translate it my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, so El is like the singular form of it. And Elohim, sometimes it's Elo. Elo, like ending with like an H sound uh, for the singular. And 
Elohim is the plural. I might be a little bit off on my Hebrew there. You know, I don't speak Hebrew fluent. I don't speak Hebrew. I've just studied a lot of Hebrew words. Uh, but Elohim, I definitely studied enough of it to know that the plural, the masculine plural in Hebrew is im. The feminine plural is ot. So anyway, um, we know that th that was the, the plural. There's two. And, but sometimes Yahweh is what was used in the Bible to refer to either one, the Father or the Son, or both of them. But definitely Yeshua is referring to the Son because His name actually means Yahshua, means Yahweh, Yah, and then Shua means saves or salvation. And that's what He, he was, He's our Savior. Uh, another thing I wanted to say about language is just look at English. If you look at English, uh, if you go back 250 years, and you can do this, go back 250 years to, uh, around 250 years to the, the signing and the writing of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America. Maybe you could go online and find a copy of the original, like, English, and you'll see that it's strange. And if you, I've actually seen the original document, like, or a copy of it anyway, and the letter S and the letter F look exactly the same. They're just like a, they almost look like the, more like the F. Um, but at that time, there wasn't uh, a definite differentiation between an F and an S. They must have known in the word how to pronounce either one. Uh, then there, now, all right, that's 250 years ago about. Go back another 250 years, 500 years ago, to the time of Shakespeare and to the time of the writing of the King James Bible. And the English gets even more different. Have you tried to read some original Shakespeare? It's really difficult, unless you've studied some of the language and the words. Some of the phrases you can't even understand. You can recognize it as English, but you, you have a hard time understanding what they're talking about. Now go back about 200 years before that, or the time of Shakespeare and the, New King, the King James Bible is Middle English. Go back around 200 to 300 years before that, and you're in Old English, and it looks like German. You can't even understand it. Now that's just with our little language here, English, with only 700 years history, where things change so much, things evolve so much. I'm just saying this so that we, we have a balanced point of view on the matter. The, the Bible and the name of Yahweh, it's thousands of years old. So I'll be the first one to admit I say Yahweh, but I won't be surprised at all when someone tells me, or Yahweh himself or Yeshua tells me, no, nah, you're saying it wrong. It's Yahweh, or it's Yahweh, or it's Yahweh, or it's some other pronunciation. But I've studied it as hard as I could, and I came to the conclusion it's Yahweh. You have to come to whatever conclusion you can study it, because it is important. Let's look at Leviticus 22.32. It says, You shall not profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am Yahweh who sanctifies you. In Psalm 68, 4, it says, Sing to Yahweh, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah. It actually, that's one place where they don't change it. Yah. And rejoice before him. Revelation 3 and verse 8. I know your works, it's talking to the Church of Philadelphia. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. So it is important, it is something important to Yahweh, that his name. So to just call him God, that's what he is. But now let's look at the word God and where that comes from. In Isaiah 65, 11, look at this in your English Bible, in the, in the King James or the New King James, it says, But you are those who forsake Yahweh, who forget my holy mountain, who prepare a table for, and then it says, G-A-D. And you might pronounce that Gad, but if you look into the Hebrew concordance, the actual pronunciation is God, and it's very similar to the English, modern English pronunciation, God. God and God was a, the, the, a name of a false deity that they were worshiping, and who furnished a drink offering for many, M-E-N-I, another false deity. Do you want to use the name of a false deity? Even if you're saying God, it sounds too much like a false deity. Let's, let's figure out what it is. I say Yahweh, but you need to find out what, you're gonna, what, you're, what his name is, because it is important. It is an important matter.